Hello guys, welcome back. This is Delkip Tutorial here and I am again back once again with a new Cinema 4D tutorial. So today's tutorial we're going to be learning to motion track. No logo animation, no modeling or anything of that sort. We're going to be learning one of the new features of Cinema 4D R16 and R17. Well, if you want to motion track only in Cinema 4D by using only Cinema 4D as a software without even using After Effects for camera tracking with all the camera plugins and all that. And if you want to use only Cinema 4D, you need to have Cinema 4D R16 and R17. So make sure you get that to motion track. So um, motion tracking. What is motion tracking? Motion tracking is tracking the motion of an object. It's pretty simple. Tracking the motion of an object. So let me just show you what we're going to be creating and then you guys can have a better idea as to what motion tracking is. So, uh, as you can see, uh, that was uh, some metabol objects that I used and uh, put in my logo uh, in my text and, uh, you know, make it look like it's really existing there in the room. So it's pretty cool stuff, pretty cool things, which you guys can obviously uh, you know, uh, create with your own, but I'm going to be showing you only how to motion track, plain motion tracking in Cinema 4D. Okay, so let us begin. So we want to go here in this tab called Motion Tracker, and once we click that down, we get two options. One is a motion tracker, and one is a full stop. Now, the motion tracker is uh, gives you, allows you to manually track. Uh, it allows you to mask some stuff. It allows you to change the frame rate and all that stuff, all different different stuff. Manual tracking. But we just want to, for the purpose of this tutorial, uh, we don't want to do anything else different. We just want a normal motion tracking. So I'm just going to click on full solve. And now that takes me to uh, the place where I have to choose my footage. Now, uh, usually uh, some of the word, some of the uh, Cinema 4Ds, they allow you to uh, import the full MP4 or AVI file. But it wasn't happening in my case. So what I did is I went in and create render out an image sequence so if you guys want to know how to uh, render out an image sequence just drop in a comment in the description and i'll just reply back letting you know how to do it so once we have that we want to go and uh, check our um choose the first frame and then we're going to click open and then what it does you can see here that it's preloading the footage and also we have our um uh, you know uh, uh the uh, ba the the background with the with our footage so uh, it's preloading the footage so uh, depending on the time number of frames you have the more time will take I'm not gonna be pausing anything over here because I actually want you to see how much time it will take and uh, you know uh, how, how it actually goes on what are the pro what, what, what are the processes that happen and now you can see that it has uh, uh, what it what it has done is it has put in tracking points which are basically null objects and us uh, and uh, keyframe the movement pro of these tracking points from to, to the all frames for like 300 frames, 270 frames, something like that. And now it is running the 3D solver. So I think 3D solver means it's optimizing it or something and adding the cameras and uh, I don't know what it's actually doing. But uh, run 3D solver is what is going on. I'm just going to wait for it to um, uh, finish it up. So let's wait. Okay, so now it says pre-optimization, and then uh, it says optimization, and I have no clue what. If you guys do want to know what it is, please go to Google and just check it out, because um, that is uh, my least concern when I'm, you know, making something in Cinema 4D. Okay, so almost done. Let's go, 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 let's go finish this up. We're waiting and we're waiting and there we go. It says definite solve finished perfect So now as soon as it finishes solving it jumps out of the uh, camera So that's an indication saying that the motion tracking is done. So now if we have a look we see we have all these points these tracking points and uh, a lot of stuff and if I, if I if I just press down the plus key We can see we have the camera which has hell a lot of keyframes and auto features which are all the all the nulls all the cracking points. So now what we're going to do is we just want to go and play this so you guys can see what is actually happening. Uh, even the focal length is being keyframed over here as you can see here there's a, there's a button here and 
So that is pretty much uh, how it, it looks from the outside. So let's click on this black button and now we can see through. So now if I just take in and uh, let's see, drop in a sphere and I'm going to uh, reduce the radius down of this to 10 and I'm just going to go take the circle Z and uh, move it like that and we play it. We see it you know, it, 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 it doesn't uh, stick to the center and does not look realistic. So how do we uh, assign, uh, tell Cinema 4D to uh, fix the dimensions up, down, left, right, center and all that? It's pretty simple. So what we're going to do, what we're going to do is we're going to go to Motion Tracker and we want to, okay, we want to make sure that we have the camera selected or the Motion Tracker selected. And then we're going to go to Motion Tracker, Constraints and we want to click Create Position Constraint. Now what is Create Position Constraint? It allows us to decide where we want the center of origin of the whole camera to be. So in my case, I'm just going to click on this part over here, which I would like it to be the center and done. Next, we want to go and choose constraint and we want to choose a vector constraint. And here in the vector constraint, we want to decide the uh, axis. So the Y axis. So I'm just going to click uh, this point over here and this point over here. And I'm going to set the axis to Y. So this is the vector constraint and that is done. And then we want to go to constraints and choose a planar constraint and this is one where, where we want to decide the floor which which is the floor so how do we decide what is the floor so we are just going to go and create a simple um take a nice uh, uh piece of points uh pieces of points and we can just uh, grab them so i think i'm going to select um this one, this one, and these three points, and I'm going to go and choose the axis to Y. Now, you're probably asking me why I'm choosing it to Y. It's basically because I can't choose X or Z, because it is X and Z plane. So, this part of the planar constraint says, define the axis, which is not represented by the axis you're trying to represent. So, here, we have X axis, and we have Z axis. That is basically what a floor is, X axis and Z axis, left and right, and front and back. So since we can't, there's no options of X, X and Z, we just want to choose Y. So when, when we select Y, it automatically tells, this automatically tells Cinema 4D's motion tracking that, hey, uh, I've chosen Y because it is X and Z. Get my point? Something like that. And then once we just set this to Y axis, we are done. We are good to go. So now as you can see here, the center of axis has, we just want to click away and the, we can see that the center of axis has been set over here. And now if I just drag a sphere and I'm going to just take the sphere and I'm going to press T, scale it down, boom, there we go. And now when you hit play, it's stuck to the ground. How cool is that? It is amazing, right? I know it is. So uh, one thing we can do is uh, let me just make a quick thing for you to guys actually show you what's actually happening. So if I just go... And I'm going to go grab a plane and uh, I'm just going to hide the sphere for a second and I'm going to increase the I'm going to go to the basic and I'm going to check on x-ray so that we can see through it and I'm just going to increase the size of this like pretty much and I'm going to press R and rotate it so as to align it with the wall that we have over there and I'm going to move this to the side and I'm going to increase it and move it back and then if I go and I'm going to take this sphere, I'm just going to take it up. I think I'm actually going to go and set this to radius or say something like 20. And then I'm going to go and uh, go to the plane. I'm going to add a uh, simulation tax collider body. I'm going to go to sphere. I'm going to go to uh, sphere. I'm going to go choose a simulation tag rigid body. And then when I hit play, we can see that it actually falls on the floor. I think I'm going to go and uh, just change the settings over here. I am going to the dynamics, uh, sorry, the collision. I'm going to set the bounce to say something like 75 and the friction set that to 10. And now when I just drop it, you see that it kind of sticks to the floor. Now if I can, if I just hide the plane and I'm going to just hide the tracker and I'm going to go and hide the grid as well. And now you can see it actually sits on the floor, you know, pretty cool, you know. You know what I'm saying? To make it more even more realistic, I'm just going to go duplicate the sphere. I'm going to take the first sphere, move it up here, 
and just place it right beside each other. And now again, you know, it sits on the floor. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Or I'm actually gonna take one sphere. Uh, I'm gonna take the second sphere, and I'm gonna put it up over here on top of the first sphere. And now you can see this bouncing and rolling. I mean, it looks pretty realistic, you know, right? So that's what I'm saying. So that's how we motion track here in Cinema 4D. Um, crazy lot of stuff you can do with motion tracking. And uh, I think I might be making some nice visual effects stuff with this thing. I don't know if I have the time. So anyways, thank you guys very much for watching this tutorial on how to motion track in Cinema 4D R16 and R17. I uh, hope you learned something new. And uh, till then, uh, see you goodbye. And uh, see you in other future tutorials. Take care.